G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this video is a review of the Inspiroy H950P from Huion. Now I know you guys mock the way I say H instead of H. Well, that's just how I say it and it's not changing, so deal with it. Now that's just one of a couple of little housekeeping things I want to get out of the way at the start. And the next is that this video is sponsored by Huion. There is a 10% off coupon code, I'll link it on the screen and in the description. Go use it at the official Huion shop or Amazon shops. I should mention however though that the recent version, the recent iteration of this device has Tilt enabled and that's only available on the official Huion store. So if you want to have the Tilt feature but also would prefer to buy off of Amazon, for example, you can still get the tilt functionality, but it requires a bit of a firmware update and I'll link all the uh, details to that in the description down below as well. Huion are a channel sponsor and I'm releasing a video reviewing one of their devices. However, in all of my reviews of products, I try and be as unbiased and informative as possible, sharing the pros and cons in my overall experience. This is a review of having used this device for about four or five hours. So if you're looking for someone who has used it for years, unfortunately, I cannot give you that perspective. However, I have used many different tablet devices, both display tablets and pad tablets, and I feel that does give me a bit of a, a good idea as to whether a device is worthwhile or what the features that it hits or doesn't quite hit uh, are like and whether that should affect or shouldn't affect someone's purchase. So let's jump into the specs of this device. Huion Inspiroy H H, H, God, that, you guys are gonna call me out on that so much. H950P tablet has a working area of 8.7 by 5.4 inches, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, and a battery-free stylus. Beyond that, there are eight customizable express keys, meaning that there are eight little keys on the device that you can use either on the right or left of the device, depending on whether you're right or left-handed, which you can add keyboard shortcuts to, such as Control Z, that's a personal favorite of mine. It's a, it's a shortcut for undo because I keep making mistakes as we'll get to in this review. <laughs> and new in particular to this device, there is the functionality of tilt added, meaning it detects if the pen is doing that or in what direction it's doing that in, you get the point. So that's it for all of the basic specs and on the surface level, it sounds like a, a good but fairly standard sort of device. The actual use of it I found was kind of surprisingly good in ways that I didn't expect. I wanna start off by going through my use experience chronologically, starting off with the installation of the drivers and setting up and using of the tablet. Obviously unboxing it, it's pretty straightforward. You open it up and inside you have the tablet itself first Underneath there's a few other stock standard things such as the USB cable to plug it in, the pen, the pen holder which also doubles as an, a spare nib holder which comes equipped with spare nibs inside. The device installation and setup is really straightforward as has been my experience in the past. You just go to the, the Huion website, in particular if you have any doubt just google the name of the product that you get from Huion, you end up on the shop page, you go to the download section on that page and there's a link to your driver download. So you download it, install it and it's pretty straightforward forward like that, seemingly. I'll get to my, why I'm being mysterious a bit later on. <laughs> Once set up, uh, it really was a matter of like one to two minutes tops to, to get set up. Using this thing was really great. I opened up Photoshop and immediately started drawing and this is where I started to be a little bit surprised. I say that because like I said, I've used a lot of pad tablets in my lifetime. This is the first time that I found myself immediately enjoying the experience because I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit of an elitist. I love my display tablets. I like drawing on the screen. It is for most digital artists, the preferable way to have a pen input. This is the first time where I haven't needed to warm up to the use of a pad tablet. And don't get me wrong, I can use a pad tablet where you look at the screen but you're drawing sort of out of your line of sight because you're watching the cursor move around. It's basically like a mouse, but it's a pen. Now I've used that a lot. I've made entire games and animations with pad tablets. It's never really been an issue, but I have had to allow for three or four hours to warm up to the device until I was comfortable with it. This was the first time where that didn't need to happen and I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I drank the the luck potion from Harry Potter. Fel Felix Felicis? Felice? Felices? Felice? Felice? That's a different 
book altogether. I don't know, point is, it's hard to, to quantify why this was the experience and you could in theory put it down to just me falling into place and drawing comfortably because I've done it a lot in the past. However, I do feel like the drawing area of the tablet must be similar to that of a mouse pad where it feels quite comfortable to work within that range of motion. Plus the surface of the tablet has this really nice sort of sheen to it where in particular if you use a smudge guard, but even without, it's a really comfortable drawing experience. And in the first 10 minutes, I was able to start like feeling confident enough to be like, maybe I'll try calligraphy. And I'm not a calligrapher. I don't have very fine calligraphy motor skills, but I really felt like, hey, maybe I should try doing something that would be a challenge to me and requires some finesse on this thing. And I wrote the word calligraphy in a calligraphic font. Is that how you say it? It'll do. And the point I'm trying to make is, it was really comfortable. It, it was immediately really comfortable, which is great. So let's move on from first impressions there and talk a little bit about more of the finer points of use. One of which is the way you draw. Sometimes people like to draw from the wrist. Sometimes people like to draw from the elbow or the shoulder. This is sort of got one of those weird things where you're in one of either sweet spots. You're either drawing with uh, sort of finer details and in smaller areas on the tablet and screen, therefore drawing with your wrist or you're moving your arm a little bit more and drawing sort of over the overall work area of the tablet. The reason I mention this is because I tried drawing one simple character at a small, medium and large size just to see how it felt drawing in all of those and I felt like the result and the drawing experience was most comfortable at small and large. Moving on to the tilt functionality or lack thereof, because I'm an idiot. When I got to the stage where I was like, oh, okay, so this device boasts tilt functionality, which is fairly new for, a, you know, a small form factor and really cheap tablet. I wanted to, in my use and reviewing of this thing, quantify if that really made a difference or not. And I couldn't figure out how to use it or if it was in use or if it was even that relevant a feature for digital art programs because I couldn't figure out how to activate it or if it was noticeable or not. It turns out that when I installed the drivers, I had a, a program open in the background and I already had previous versions of the drivers installed, which I sort of ignored warnings about. It turns out I didn't really install the drivers. <laughs> I discovered this because I just couldn't find the tilt functionality and in attempting to find it, I found an art slash brush program that is entirely focused on tilt functionality called Expressy and it's, it sort of shows the 3D rotation of the pen and it wasn't showing any 3D rotation. So obviously I knew something was up, uninstalled all the Huion drivers, started from scratch and ah, everything clicked into place. It's almost like you're supposed to do that. All of a sudden, the Huey on interface was new and shiny and different. Anyway, this brings me to my next point, tilt functionality. And in a way, I'm kind of glad that I made that mistake because I experienced the device without any tilt feature and then immediately after with tilt enabled. And where I previously was a little skeptical or didn't know how much of a difference it would make, it makes a huge difference. It makes the art programs that support tilt feel like new and completely deeper art programs. Obviously starting off with that Expressy brush program that I mentioned, you can see the entire 3D representation of your brush on the screen, tilt and rotation, and the actual use of it in the program is obviously a completely different experience because it's entirely built around that. But really I wanted to see how this thing worked in Photoshop, which is obviously what I use every day, and it felt way better. And I don't know what it is, like I think a lot of the tablets I use day to day probably have, you know, the, the tilt and rotation and all that stuff in the same way. But I think because it's such a small form factor and affordable tablet, it felt way more impressive. The difference it made to use a lot of the default Photoshop brushes, especially the ones with tilt and rotation enabled, was phenomenal. And I, I felt like the entire responsiveness of the experience was a lot better. So that's my overall chronological experience over that four to five hours using the device. And I want to give you some overall thoughts and impression, of course, with the disclaimer of it being a four to five hour use case. The problem is if I'm too excited about a device, especially if Huion sponsored the video, it 
might come across as biased. So I'm going to start off with the cons. The first is, and will always be, you need to have a double click in your drivers. I don't know why it's not there yet. It should be a really easy addition just to a driver update. Put a double click in there for the love of God, please. The workaround I currently use with Huion devices is to set one of the mouse clicks on the pen to be a left click. And then of course, touching the screen is a left click. So if you click and click, it's a double click, but it adds an extra step and a little area of uncertainty. If you slightly move the pen when it presses down, it's just less accurate and more minutely time consuming than it needs to be. The shortcuts and express keys, this is just a meh. I don't use them. So uh, I could take them or leave them, but I obviously think it's great that they're there because eight shortcut keys is useful for people who use shortcut keys. You know, it's it's not for me personally, but I do think it's there. So it's not a con, it's, it's uh, somewhere in the middle. If you like it, it's great. If you don't like it, it's there. So having gotten all the cons out of the way and just been as brutal as I possibly could with anything I could find, I wanna now get to the pros because there are quite a few pros, more than I expected there would be. I knew this would be a good device. I didn't expect this to be a device that actually blew me away. <laughs> this thing felt great, looks fantastic, and the build quality feels really sturdy and clean. But the most important thing when it comes to a tablet, especially a pad tablet, is how it feels to use. You want to be able to sit down at this thing for five to 10 hour sessions, a couple of times a week at least, and feel comfortable with it. And I think this thing ticks so many boxes in that regard. The use of the device handles like a dream and it has become a loud and clear number one recommendation as a starter tablet for me. You should get this if you're a beginner and you wanna get a tablet. This thing is fantastic. And I, as a professional, I'm actually going to be using it. That sounds weird, but let me explain. I travel a lot. So I take my laptop with me and uh, usually on flights or in hotel rooms, I find myself editing and using the laptop because the form factor of the laptop is better for hotels and flights and all that stuff. But every now and then, of course, I need to draw. Now in the past and on a recent trip, this was what I would also bring with my laptop, a Mobile Studio Pro. It's fairly small, but it's also quite heavy and you don't just bring the Mobile Studio Pro, you bring the keyboard, you bring the stand, and of course you bring the charger because it's its own device and has its own battery life. Needing both to be carry-ons made the flying experience a little cumbersome to say the least. So I found myself through the process of traveling mainly just sticking to the laptop because swapping between them was uncomfortable and the form factor of the laptop is much more I don't know, usable over a long-term basis. Enter my new friend here that I've been reviewing in this video. I am going to, from now on, for most of my traveling where I don't expect to be doing a large amount of lengthy art sessions, going to bring this thing along with my laptop. And as far as peripherals and extras to bring with it, it's this. It's crazy how portable this thing is, light this thing is, and how much utility it provides, even for a professional. So while I have talked through this video about it being a beginner device, it's also a fantastic secondary utility device for people who need a little extra utility on the go. And that's me. This is me. That's the weirdest thing. I think that's why I'm so blown away because I'm like, I, I needed this thing. And I didn't realize it. <laughs> Which brings me to my final verdict. This was a real pleasant surprise for me. Whether you're a beginner who is looking for their entry into digital art and animation, or you're actually someone who needs a little extra utility in their professional day-to-day -day lives, such as myself having come from a professional art and animation and game design background and having used so many tablets and needing so many different forms of tablet and drawing utility on the go, this thing brings me a, sort of a new world of utility that I haven't sort of experienced in something so small and affordable yet, especially considering this thing is only $79.99 USD and that's without the discount. So the Huron H950P gets an absolute two thumbs up from me and I can highly recommend it. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to get to them and let you know my thoughts. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to like this video. You can leave me a suggestion in the comments for future devices and things you want me to review or check out if you enjoy this kind of video. And of course, if you're new to Draw With Jazza, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more fun with art and animation. Go check out my videos I have loads of different challenges and different art projects and of course I have a whole bunch of different unboxings and reviews of programs and products like this tablet that I reviewed today and a whole bunch more. That's it for now ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching and until next time I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and while you're at it check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.